people of YouTube, right here the Malik Aaron Aaron, and well, one from now when I'm filming, it's pretty late. But I decided before I get to the proper review, I want to show you some things. So I went to McKay's today. Well, this filming on a uh, Saturday, but it'll come up on a Sunday. So yeah, I went to McKay's today. It got me like nine. DVDs for like 18 bucks And that's a pretty good deal if you ask me it's like two that's the equivalent of like two dollars per DVD so That's pretty nice So now I'm on this little bag I just want to show you all What they are now all these movies will be reviewed in the like later future because the entire October the whole month of October is already booked with reviews. I already booked that whole month. And uh, around like a bit of November. So yeah. But I'm just going to show you a couple things. I got Contagion. Which I think is a pretty good movie. Very realistic depiction of disease. What would happen. And oh boy. Next up. Super Mario Brothers the movie. Here you go. Oh yeah, just to be clear, those are Goombas, uh, that's Yoshi, that's Bowser, and this is Mario and Luigi. Yes, uh, yeah, shows you all you need to know. <laughs> Next up, yeah, Beowulf, um, from Robert Zemeckis. It's pretty good, um... The CGI animation isn't as creepy as it is in Polar Express, but it's still up there. So, yeah, there's a reason why uh, motion capture animation isn't very big. It's not a big genre. Speaking of that, <laughs> we have Final Fantasy Spirits Within. I am i don't play Final Fantasy. I have no knowledge of Final Fantasy, so I'm basically going to this blind. Which usually is never a good idea. I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, for 2001, the animation is really, really good. But I'm gonna review it later on. Uh, next up, a very underrated movie, Nine. Uh, this was. This is a, a PG-13 anime movie, and that never happens, ever. Most anime movies are, like, G mainly PG. I don't even, G is barely a rating anymore. It's mostly PG. This is PG-13 because of the, uh, the action, the violence. So, yeah, it's a pretty underrated movie, in my opinion. Next up, Hostel, a.k.a. Sauce spiritual sequel <laughs> and this was what really started the whole uh torture porn uh craze that happened in the mid 2000s this really kicked it off i mean saw sort of started it because saw was like it was a bit more low-key with it this is just full-on blatant in its gore so uh, yeah i don't have part two i might get it if i find it so you can look out for that. Next up. V for Vendetta. Now I know this is based off of uh, Alan Moore's um uh wait, this is out the Well not Alan Moore. Uh I know this is from like the creators of the Matrix trilogy, the Wach the Wachowskis. And I've heard some really good things about it, especially with Hugo Reaving, since he never shows his face ever. He wears that mask the whole time. And also there's Natalie Portman, which is pretty nice. Next up is uh, American Beauty. Um, I mainly uh, got this because I was just curious about it. Some of the movies I usually get, you know, like Fight Club and Drive and you know, crash. I just get out of mainly curiosity, just to see, you know, you know, for my can so I can experience it. So yeah, I've heard really good things about this. And last, 
and certainly least this abomination of human of cinema, the last airbender. <laughs> I have nothing more to say about this. There's nothing more t that needs to be said. I mean, I everyone said everything about the casting, what they did to the source material, the characters, the uh, writing, the dialogue, the acting. It's all a disaster. And I will probably go really in depth with it when, when I eventually review it. So yeah, that's all the DVDs I got. All right here uh, today. But, and all of those will be reviewed in uh, later on in the year. But now, the real review. <sighs> Batman... The killing joke. Yeah. I'm just gonna read like this little description right here. I mean, you can read it right here if you don't want to, you know, who cares? Uh, from executive producer Bruce Tim, and based on the acclaimed DC Comics graphic novel, the Batman the Killing Joke is a journey into the dark psyche of the Clown Prince of Prime, Prime, <laughs> Clown Prince of Crime, follow his humble beginnings as a struggling comic to the faithful encounter with the Dark Knight that changed everything. Now escaped from Arkham Asylum, the Joker sets out to prove that one bad day can make anyone just as insane as he is. With the Joker's sights set on Commissioner Gordon, can Batman stop the demented plan in time? Featuring a gripping prologue. No, 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 uh, Spotlighting Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, and featuring the return of Kevin Conroy as Batman, Mark Hamill as the Joker, and Tara Strong as Batgirl, witness the birth of a supervillain, the fortitude of a hero, and the punchline that will leave you speechless. You might as well start with the most, the biggest problem, the prologue. It's a third. It's a thirty-minute prologue. They put it in there because they realized that the Killing Joke storyline itself was not long enough to have a theatrical, like uh, appropriate. Because it's got so much hype. Um, people like were like demanding it. Like it was just crazy. Twenty sixteen was a really hype year for DC in general, and then they all, they botched every last one of the projects. It was a complete laughingstock. But anywho, yeah, they had to add this 30 minute prologue just to like, have a decent runtime. Because the, the whole Killing Joke storyline is not long enough. It's pretty short. So yeah, this prologue, why does it exist? Why is it here? It has nothing to do with anything. It's just there to give Barbara Gordon or Batgirl some character before, you know, she gets shot and paralyzed. So, I mean, I understand why they would do it, but the way they did it was horrible. Like, it was just, I was just watching it, and I'm just like, it was just so boring. I mean, you have, like, this, this generic villain. His name is uh, Paris France. I'm not joking. That's his, well, he goes by the name of that. But I'm not joking. That's his, his name. I wish I was. But uh, he has, like, a plan to do something evil bad guy stuff because he's like the nephew of like this crime boss and then Batgirl um is trying to get him the Batman's just like I don't want you doing that like uh you're you're only gonna get yourself hurt and Batgirl's just like stop treating me like a child <laughs> and all of that and then that leads to the notorious the infamous the awful sex scene 
between Batgirl and Batman. Yep. Teacher, technically, teacher and student are getting it on. <laughs> and what's even worse, like, like uh, you know they're going to do something, but they don't even show it. Like, they just cut away, like, right before it happens. And I'm just like, wow, movie, you have zero courage. This is, let me read right here. This is R rating. Here, you see that right here? R rating. Which means you should have more freedom, creative freedom to do more things. But no, they just cut it right off. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go for it, like if you're gonna just do it, at least go all the way with it. Like, don't just wimp out. All right. I mean, that just that triggered me a, a lot. Because, like, not only just the scene in general, but just how they handled it really triggered me. But, uh, yeah, Batgirl in general, she is just, she has not been treated good these last couple of years. <laughs> First in this, then Lego Batman, and, uh, now, uh, I know Joss Whedon is supposedly making a Batgirl movie, but I don't think that's going to happen because of all the negative publicity he's gotten. And it's, it's just really bad. I don't even think the DCU has a plan at this point. I think it's just throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. And only Aquaman, One Woman 2, and maybe Shazam. Those are the only three that have stuck so far. Everything else is just either sliding or completely fallen at this point. But, you know, that's... Anywho. Enough about that. Uh, but just... Batgirl is just... She's just so terrible. She's just... She's so whiny. Like... I'm just like... Is this who we're supposed to root for? Or, like, care about? Because I don't care about her at all. Because her character is so bad. And so poorly written. Um... And then, uh... Another problem... And also, oh, I forgot, she has, like, their, um, her uh, little, uh, gay friend, and, like, it's just so, so, so stereotypical, and, like, it's like the, it's, I'm just like, look, I know this was written in, like, I think the late 80s, early 90s, that period, Look, I know it was written in that time period, and the story should take place in that time period, but this is 2016, could you at least be a bit more modern about it, instead of doing, like, this, em this embarrassing stuff? Like, it's just... Ugh. Just... Why? <laughs> and then the animation. Now, uh, sometimes it looks good, but other times it looks really, really wonky. Like, it really looks like direct-to-DVD. Some of it actually looks worse than direct-to-DVD. If I had to be, uh, completely honest. But then they get to the actual Killing Joke storyline. And considering I've never read it, so I don't have, um, you know, much thought in, you know, critiquing, you know, like, the graphic novel itself. Um, honestly, I don't know, maybe I should have read, I really should have read the graphic novel before watching this movie. I mean, I, I mean, I saw it come to life, and I've heard, like, people are like, oh, it's just a shot-for-shot -shot recreation. So I was like, okay. I mean, it's okay-ish. Um... I don't know. It just didn't sit well with me. I, I guess it's just not my cup of tea, honestly. But the good things. Two things. Kevin Conroy as Batman and Mark Hamill as the Joker. Both reprised their roles from Batman the Animated Series and the Batman Arkham games. And, um, again, they do a really good job. I mean, why one day? I mean, these are, these are some iconic roles. 
So yeah, that's you know what I'm done talking about this. That's the killing joke. Animation's bad. Uh, the prologue is awful and useless. Batgirl is treated so horribly as a character. Um, but Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill are good and as the voices. Even uh, Tara Strong as a Batgirl, despite some of the awful dialogue she's given, she does the best she can with it. I have to commend her for that, but... This movie, it's not worth your time. And like, I don't even know what they're doing with like these DC animated movies anymore. Like, it's just... I don't understand. Honestly. Such a like Bruce Timm. Like, I don't know what he's doing. First he did this. Then he made Batman and Harley Quinn. Or he made Harley Quinn, like, fart in a car. In the Batmobile, and I'm just like, what are you doing? Are you are you on something? <laughs> are you on something? Because if you are, you need to stop right now. So I'm going to give this 3 out of 10. Some people will be like, it should be lower, or so it should be a bit higher. But no, it's 3 out of 10. Don't watch this. Don't try to watch this, honestly. It's just... It's a... It's... It's, it's the killing joke. <laughs> so that's that. Now we're going to get to the match. It's going to be a six-man tag. It's going to be the one and only the Roman Reigns. Teaming up with uh, RVD and Ryback against uh, Rollins, Ambrose, and Jericho. And a six-man match. So we're going to get to that right now. All right, everybody. Where's everybody else? You forgot to mention, um, it would be like, uh, what is it? Like two men start and then one from each team comes. Oh, it's those type of rules. Forgot. Yeah, like, you two are going to start and another team member will come and then I'll keep going until all of them are out and then all of you fight until somebody wins. Simple? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's go. Ring a ding ding, and Ambrose. Oh, oh, why have the Ryback going going ham on a uh, Ryback? This is um for just being you. Oh, oh, right into that turnbuckle. Oh, right into Ryback, and oh, that was weird. And who's next right now? It's me, the Roman Reigns. And oh. Oh, Roman. Flying all over the place. Oh. It's me, it's me, the big dog. Oh. Still understand why you three broke up again. Well, they were jealous of the Roman Reigns. And here I am now to sell the score again. Oh. And here comes Rollins. Oh. Slid right off of Roman. That was pretty cool. What's Rollins doing now? Oh. Right in the face of Roman. And then what's Rollins? Rollins trying to go for that pedigree, but oh, Roman Reigns counters as usual. And what's he doing now to Rollins? Oh, so Rollins drop onto the ring. And who is next? It's none other than RVD. Eh. Oh, Rob, please tell me you're not high again. Nah. I didn't take that much. Oh no. Rob. Look, we don't quite have drug policies like on WWE, but you can't be doing this all the time. Well, I am. We all oh. see, see what happens, Rob. Gosh. And here I am, the Ayatollah Rock and Roller. And oh, jeez. Here I go. Oh. 
Oh, Lion Salt to Ryback. Well, what's Roman doing now? Oh! Slid him back into the ring. Hoorah! Superman Punch! Oh! Got him right in the face. And now he's going down for real. Roman, you are truly awful at catchphrases. Yes, I am. And there's nothing you can do about it because I'm paying the... I'm getting that big paycheck. And now for a spear. Oh, it's the weakest spear I've ever seen. Yo, man, I could do better than that. Yeah, I go my flying kick. We oh, there goes Jericho. Ooh, feeling good. Now I'm gonna give a frog splash to Seth Rollins. Ow, ow, wait, ow, 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 ow. Oh, RVD just accidentally hit Roman with a frog splash. What's Rollins doing now? Pedigree. Solid pedigree. But Ryback doing a Ryback and oh. Doing his thing. Oh, Spawn Buster. What's he doing to Ambrose? Oh. Nearly decapitated him. And now what's uh, Ryback doing? Trying to get them in the right position. Just give me a second. Oh my gosh. He has both of them over his head. But now I'm going to give them the shell shock. I don't think so, man. Oh, Jericho saves the day. What's Jericho doing now? Oh, oh my gosh. Goodness, that was a vicious code breaker. Yeah. That was good. Oh. What's RVD doing? Oh, no, 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 not to the back. Oh. Jeez. Yeah, I'll handle him. And what's Rob doing now? I mean, <laughs> Dean doing now. Sorry. Eh, it's hard to get him this. 30 deeds. There we go. Take this, Rob. Oh, no. No. Oh! Right on his head. And here I come with the Roman Reigns. Oh! Hoorah! Ugh. And now, to show off my dominance before I beat John Cena in real life and no mercy. Hoorah! Oh! Spear. Spear right to Ambrose. But... But Rollins, out of nowhere, oh, a pedigree, a weak pedigree, but effective nonetheless. And he's going for the cover, one, two, three, oh, what? What? Rollins, Jericho, and Ambrose win. Surprised to happen that quickly, but yeah, you guys won. <laughs> Yay, we win. Yeah, man. Now we're going to do some partying. Let's do some rock and roll. What's the next review, man? It's going to be a horror movie remake. Oh, gosh. How many of those are out there? Millions. <laughs> I, I guarantee you, millions. But it's going to be one of the more famous ones. You got to give me a character. There's many famous ones, man. Um... See, it's not Michael Myers. Okay, no Halloween. It's not Freddy Krueger. All right. Um. Uh, no Nightmare on Elm Street. It's not Leatherface. All right, no Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, the only one left is Jason Voorhees. Yes. But which one? There are millions of those things. It's the Michael Bay one. Oh, that thing. I kind of liked it. I liked it when Jason ran. Made him a lot more intimidating. But the kids are so stupid. Like, they lack brain cells. Yeah, they really do. So, that'll be the next review. Make sure to subscribe. 
Uh, like this video, leave a comment. We'll see you all next time, man. And we are out.